Bill Gates said, if I was down to my last dollar, I would spend it on PR. So public relations is a, is a big deal. And um, the things that it can do for your brand and for your image behind your company are incredible. Um, I think that's a, a powerful statement from somebody like uh, Bill Gates. I want to tell you about some, some times where we've been able to use PR to in, increase sales, increase profits, and, and, and re, re-infuse our business with, with excitement and with, that people know that they can go there and, and get quality products. One of the things that I'll tell you about is um, we had some fun with, with there's a bakery that we was working with, and he'd been a great baker for over 30 years, uh, had provided great products, uh, kind of been passed through the family. Um, as we were working with them, their sales had kind of started to dip off with some of the new businesses in town, Krispy Kremes and that, because they were almost looked at as, as the old has band. Even though their product was still world class, um, they'd been around so long, people, they weren't the new and exciting. And so we decided, what could we do to, to re-emphasize the quality of this product? And so first of all, I insisted on doing a taste test and tasted all of his products. That had nothing to do with marketing, that just happened to do with I Love Bakery. Then second, we went through, and as we were looking at it, we said, okay, what he's really known for are their eclairs. That's one of the number one things. And, and they had by far the best eclairs I've ever eaten in my life and just did a great job with them. They sold a ton and it was, it was a big part of what they did. So as I was thinking about it, I thought, you know what, let's, let's do a, a big eclair event. And so as I looked out there, I saw that maybe we could do the world's largest eclair. So I checked Guinness Book of World Records and there was not previously uh, a world's largest eclair. So we were able to, to make one big, but we didn't have to meet any specific size requirements. When we did that, we, we, we decided on the size, we put together, we, we planned uh, the event to make it, and I decided, you know what, it'd be really great if Guinness came and, and told us that we you know, achieved the world record and, and gave us you know, whatever certificate or whatever they have. So I called Guinness uh, and said, hey, here's what we got going on. Would you come out? Would you do this? And they said, no, we don't come out unless there's media involved. So I called the media who had already sent press releases to and, and just verified. And two of the stations said that they for sure were planning on attending. And uh, so I called Guinness back and said, uh, hey, yeah, the media's gonna be here, we need you to be there. Um, and they said, great, we'll book our flight, we'll come in, we'll do it. And so we had the event. Now the event was really cool how it, how it came together is because we'd sent it out as a press release, those two morning shows that showed up to cover it on TV competed against each other. They were both kind of pushing each other's cameras out and then, hey, we want to do ours next. We want to cover this, this, and this. And then they tried to outdo each other. The, the one of the personalities was like, no, no, I want a baker's hat on. I want to be in the back. I want to do the whole morning show from here. And they kept pushing. And because of that, we got all kinds of media coverage. Um, and through that, we also put a big banner out by the road, home of the world's largest eclair with the, with the Guinness insignia on it. And we made a big deal of it that way. Now, here's the result of that. It was kind of cool. That day, we had a lot of attention. But the neat thing was, is beyond that day, business took an upswing and started going back up again and continued to grow. And in, we were able to see that just that reminder, anchoring that in people's minds, that they still were one of the leaders in bakery, right? They still were a great place to go. They were still competitive. They weren't an old has-been. They were something that, that, that is great our business and profits continue to sell. And so it turned out to be a great success. Um, we, because of that, we did a lot of other things. We even with the grocery stores at one point, they had a new store opening. We wanted to make a huge, huge uh, impact and let everybody know that this store was now uh, open. So as part of it, we ordered in um, 26,000 pounds of watermelon and had the world's largest watermelon display. And it was neat because we we got with Guinness again. We knew uh, that they only came to there's press, so we made sure we had press coming. But in addition to that, we didn't realize this, but I don't know if you knew that, but there is a Miss Watermelon USA. And she happened to live in North Carolina, but 
We let her know that we had this event coming on and we'd love participation. And they paid her way and flew her out to be a part of our event. And so at our event, we had these TV personalities. We had the Ginsburg World Records. We had Miss Watermelon USA there. And, and it just made it a great event. Lots of people taking pictures. We had the TV personalities and Miss Watermelon USA, who, by the way, was this little skinny thing. But she, she could out eat watermelon with this great big uh, news anchor guy. And just had fun with, with watermelon contests, seed spinning contests, things like that. Made the whole day great. But what it did is it also anchored in people's mind that this is what this particular store was about. They were about doing things big, doing things fun, doing things exciting. And as a new store opening, it had one of the best kickoffs that, that any of our stores ever had. Um, more people switched over and that became their store right off the back than before. So I don't know if I, if you know this or not, but um, all TV, radio, and newspaper media, um, they have a policy that they have to follow. The government makes them to remain a news agency. They have to give up 15% of their airtime or, or newspaper space or whatever to public service announcements or charities, right? Um, and they have to do that every month, and they have to show they did it to, to remain and keep their status. So... What people don't realize is that they are hungry for public service events, whether it's tied in with a charity or some other type of event. They're hungry for that. Now, again, in charities, a lot of people have their charities between November and December. Um, during that time, they get a lot more full. But the whole rest of the year, they are honestly looking for how can we tie into the charity? How can we be a part of uh, or promote an event that's going on? So my challenge to you is to look at your upcoming events. Look at some of the things that you've got coming and, and, and planned in the works, some promotions, some of the things you're doing with your team, whether it's with a charity, and come back and say, how can I make this a, a, a public relations event? How can I make this a PR where I put out a press release, where we have people come and, and we, get, we get some recognition for some of the efforts that we're putting out there? Um, I, I swear if you do this, I promise you that you'll see an increase in business. You'll see a whole better attitude about your, your company. It'll be looked at it be as fun and exciting. And the benefits will be very obvious to you. Um, so please go out, look at where how you can do this, and pull it off. This is my challenge to you, and this is from our point of view.